Hi, everybody. We want to welcome you back to Gospel Nova Scotia. Uh, we're just sitting in a beautiful day today. It's about plus 15. To, so, today's March the 18th, and it's about it's probably about that hot out, too. It's probably about 18 degrees out front. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, thanks a lot, you guys, for coming back. And um, if you're new to the show, it's just a real simple talk. Lem and I just, usually I have tea along with Lem today. I got a water, but usually it's just tea talk where we just, Talk about what God's been speaking to us this week and uh, what he's been doing in our heart this week. I'm going to talk about faith uh, today and from the perspective of being a disciple. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that today, just for a few minutes after Lem um, talks. And what are you going to share today, Eddie? I'm going to talk about a little bit from Hebrews. Mm -hmm. um, I've just started reading that. But before that, I was thinking about this verse that Jesus says in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And I used to think, well, that's great for you, Lord. <laughs> you know, you overcame the world, that, that's awesome for you, but how does that relate to me? Mm. And then in Hebrews, I read about how great Jesus is, and, mm. and he's, he's made a little lower than the angel, but then the whole earth, everything was subject to him, and it mm. just goes on and on about the divinity of Christ. Mm -hmm. I thought, why is Hebrews telling me about all this, about Christ, about the Son of God? And I thought, what relevance does it have to me? Mm. You know, I mean, me, I'm human, and I'm, I'm glad he died for me. <clears throat> but it goes on to talk about <coughs> how he gives aid to us humans. Yeah. He, didn't, he doesn't even give angels mm. that kind of help. Mm -hmm. He is our high priest, and that just that is the connection between us and the divine. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't sit there and say, "You do this." Yeah. He he became flesh so that he can become our. He understands everything. Yeah. That we go through, you know. He and, never became anything angelic for the yeah. sake of well. I know. The angels, or at least not that we ever know about, knew I about. I know. Yeah. But he became. Yeah, flesh. and he was tempted in every way, and yeah. he didn't sin. Like to me, I think. I know different people think differently. He didn't sin because he couldn't sin. He's God. Mm. But he was tempted. So mm. he understands what temptation is like. That's right. Because God is not tempted. He became human, so he understands temptation. Yeah. Even though true. he couldn't sin. Yeah. He knows what we go through, and so he helps us. And yeah. I thought that is the connection yeah. between the divine and the human, you mm. know? Mm. How great he is, and yet he's connected with us. Yeah. I mean, I was really uh, I was really blessed reading that. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, I kind of felt this week, well, it was, it was, I think it was early last week. Yeah. I started to get um, think about the faith of a disciple, you know, and how, how to make that relevant to today and uh, for me it uh, first started in in what the world calls faith because there is a kind of phony fake faith that's in the world you know and yeah. it's when the, the, the more I kind of looked at it and thought about it the more I said yeah it, it basically boils down to two things both of these things have sort of eked their way into the into the church, the the, the Canadian American church, and uh, one of them is extreme positivity. It's almost in the world they teach it like being positive draws power from the the cosmos or the universe or whatever um, to the problems or the needs that you have. And people run all kinds of courses concerning extreme positivity never ever saying one uh, negative thing. And I don't believe that is faith. Yeah. <laughs> uh, faith is something concerning doubt, but not negativity. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, we are confusing faith with what the world is calling so their mysticism, their, yeah. their faith that's phony. It doesn't work, but it's what they sell. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, um, I think getting what you want in life is the most horrible thing. Mm. I think that ending up with everything, getting everything just the way you want it would be horrible, yeah. terrible, because I think you would know in the end and think, or at least think, that you were in control of your own life. Yeah. I think that's very uh, a very um, an empty thing to think. Yeah. I mean, we don't let our kids get away with no anything and everything. You don't know. No, that's right. You know. You know. So, and and that gives them a sense of security. Yeah. And I think the boundaries of a life that's loved mm -hmm. are more comforting than yeah. somebody who is completely without any boundaries. Yeah. 
I think it's a scary thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of folks who don't know God yet are living in that type of fear. Mm -hmm. Because when they go to bed at night, they're thinking, okay, what are the answers? Yeah. For this particular problem I'm facing tomorrow. And that's really challenging. Yeah. If you don't feel there's a, an incredible power. Mm -hmm. Not just that. God isn't just a power. He's also playing a fathering role yeah. over you. And when you don't realize that's there, man, you go to bed feeling pretty lonely. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, when I got saved, I was, um, my one request from God was, God, I just don't ever want to feel lonely again. Mm -hmm. And I can say I never have. Yeah, anyway, that, that, that type of, of faith that I, that I kind of thought about was that extreme positivity. There was a fellow by the name of uh, Tony Robbins. I think probably if you're around my age and around 40s and 50s that you'll remember him. He probably made a fortune on extreme pro positivity. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, went for that. And, and um, he, he had huge conferences. I think he even came to Halifax Maybe it was a decade or more ago, but and had a conference here too. And uh, he was the purveyor of self-help positivity. Mm. And um, the idea somehow was that uh, you can create the kind of life that you want mm. from your own soul. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's exactly the counterfeit of the truth. Yeah. I'm going to show you that. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you actually don't create what you want mm -hmm. uh, from yourself at all. Mm -hmm. We're going to see that as we go through just a couple of scriptures today. It's almost like he was teaching people um, to convince the universe uh, that you were positive enough, good enough through positivity mm -hmm. to deserve what you wanted. It was a really strange idea. In the pseudo church, some of that has taken hold. People who are extreme in their um, in their in their po being positive, mm -hmm. and you know something, um, not having doubt—that's one thing. Constantly being positive is another legalism. Yeah, it's just another amount of pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know there was a language to faith. Being negative is not a good thing. Yeah, but that at the same time, negativity is not the same as doubt. Yes. You know, it's yeah. not the same. And I'm going to show you uh, mm -hmm. sort of the difference between the two. Uh, don't, I would so encourage you not to get caught up in goals that, that, that are about bubbling yourself away from any hurt mm. or away uh, from any hardships constantly. Because the reality is in those hurt, mm -hmm. hurts and, and, and hardships that you go through, in life, God makes you. Yeah. And again, you're trying not to go through the fathering part yeah. of your relationship with God. You're trying to have God as a God yeah. in your life that you get stuff from instead of a father mm -hmm. in your life that you connect with. And that is hard. Yeah. It is. It, it is because you can look at God as just, <clears throat> you know, some, some sort of sugar daddy that's just giving you all that you want. Yeah. You know, you, you just tell him what you want and he runs and gets it for you. Mm. You know, he's almost more scared of losing you than you are of losing him. But God isn't that. Yeah. And uh, to the point where he changes you, he works on you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't leave you the same. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that's the kind of the first thing that I saw mm. about uh, phony faith was that. Just mm -hmm. extreme in your positiveness, you know. Yeah. And I just think it's people running away from the pain. Uh, running away from feeling for other people. They don't want to connect. Mm. All these positive guys are great until you're in need. And I don't care how many years you've helped them or how many years you've given to them, they're nowhere to be found when things get rough in your life because they're so scared, so wanting to run from anything that's hard. They run away from you mm. when things are hard in your life as well. And there's something wrong with that because God is exactly mm -hmm. the opposite. When you're in need, he's yeah. running to you. Yeah. He's carrying you. He's loving you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not telling you God isn't going to teach you uh, how to talk his language of faith yeah. during those hard times. He is. Yeah. Um, but he's not running away from you. God is not yeah. trying to live a bubbled life mm -hmm. from trouble because if he was, he would have never came yeah. to this earth for us, yeah. you know. So um, being positive is good. Yeah. 
but it's not faith. And I can, I can tell you, I can show you why really quick mm -hmm. in Matthew 16, um, 21 and 23. It's the first book in the New Testament. From that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer. <laughs> yeah, and suffer. Mm -hmm. Many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took Jesus aside and started to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. Because Peter was trying to live in, in, in that idea of positive thinking. Mm. Speak positive, be positive. You don't have to go through anything. Mm. Okay? So positivity was what Peter was considering to be faith. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, look what Jesus does. He spins around and says, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Constant positivity is based upon wanting things of this earth and somehow proving to God that you're good enough to have it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're really, it's no different than salvation. Christ is. Mm -hmm. is the source of every good thing for your life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not your goodness again. It's your. It, it's connecting with his finished work and his love for you. But that was the kind of, the first thing that I saw that kind of represented fake faith. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was um, a few years ago, a book came out called The Secret. And the idea in it all was that if you only focused all of your attention everything inside of your heart, everything inside of your mind on what you wanted, mm. okay? If you just made these goals and made those goals everything, oh man, I've seen that happen to people. I've seen folks make goals, personal uh, goals, everything in their life mm -hmm. and go for it. And yeah. uh, when they don't reach it or it doesn't happen, oh man, it is so mentally destructive. Yeah. Yeah so spiritually destructive too mm -hmm. because most of the time uh, when you're sitting down making goals you're doing it from uh the perspective of wanting stuff yeah and your goals is filled with a list of stuff that you want yeah and so it's 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 almost a worship of a lifestyle that you're shooting for and unfortunately the bible says that that kind of worship of a self life will eventually replace your, your worship of God yeah. and the time that you spend with God, you know? So caught up in wanting yeah. stuff, <laughs> yeah. you know? And um, the, I, I don't, you know, when it comes to the secret and the idea that just this intense mm -hmm. making your goals, everything in your life, it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And if it did, you know, uh, I, I remember telling them this a few years ago, I said, if that worked, every 16-year-old boy would have all kinds of beautiful women around him, be around them because they, you know, that's the focus of a young guy. That's all they think about is girls, mm. you know. But of course, it doesn't work, mm. you know. And if it did, it would again ruin your life. Mm. You'd again have the life you chose yeah. for you, okay? And thank God He protects us from that. And same thing with positivity. If it mm. if it worked, then why do good people suffer? Yeah. Folks that are positive and good still go through terrible things, mm. you know, because positivity is just soulish. Yeah. It's, it's something uh, that you're drawing from your emotions. You're drawing from your feelings. So could you almost define faith as something that doesn't originate from you? That's what I'm going to... Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. You're no, okay, yeah, okay. continue. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Something yeah. that... God originates. Yes, that's yes. what I'm. Gonna, that's what I'm going to say. Um, okay. I think faith is an agreement with the voice of God, mm. and you can look at it before anybody had any scripture, way back in in Abraham's day, where God spoke to them and told them they were going to have a son. Mm. So it originated with them, yes, or uh, with that promise, yeah, uh, and then they held on to it. Mm -hmm. And God even knew when Sarah laughed at it. He asked her, why did you laugh? Yeah. You know, and and not that it was a big deal. Yeah. He, he didn't stop the promise Yeah. because Sarah thought it was funny. All he did was name Israel or name Isaac a name laughter. that meant yeah. laughter. Yeah, that's right. I think. Yeah. 
So it wasn't the destruction. Mm -hmm. People say, oh, man, if I slip up, if I, if I even make one bad confession or don't take it all seriously, I'm going to ruin the whole thing. Yeah. Well, no, you're not. Well, they ruined it by trying too hard. That's right. They, ruined it. they ruined it by getting the flesh yes. involved. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it still didn't ruin anything. It yeah. Was just, well, it, it brought hardship. It, it did. Because when you invest into something that isn't God, mm -hmm. it's going to produce... Something that isn't good. Yeah, guys probably know that story of of Abraham and Sarah and how uh, Sarah kind of thought it was a joke. She thought it was funny mm -hmm. when she heard that God was making the promise to them of giving them a son. But that laughter, yeah. that not taking it seriously, did not put off yeah. uh, the promise. They did have a son. Yes, and so God's promise came true. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to learn. If you're going to have any faith, you're going to have to learn to hear from God. Yeah. And that is not an overnight thing. Mm. That is a process. But that, to me, is the greatest part of maturing mm. in God. You have to learn to hear yeah. uh, God, and then you have to hang on to that yeah. when you do. And when you're wrong, you just have to know, okay, I made a mistake. Mm. My, my um, fleshly ways got involved yeah. instead of hearing from god my need was so loud yeah i pretended i did and 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 made it out to be god when it wasn't mm -hmm. but you'll get past that too yeah to yeah. when you you will you'll know the voice of god mm -hmm. you'll know it yeah. it would be like if you were standing in a shower and it was all hot water and then all of a sudden one of the one of the uh, holes that shoots out water was all of a sudden shooting out cold while the rest of them were shooting out Hot. You think, well, that's impossible. That can't happen. But that's the voice of God. It, mm. it never goes along with the situation that you're in. Yeah. If, for me, anyway. Yeah. Um, it runs cross current mm. to where my thoughts are. To your soul. It's, to my soul. Yeah, to the flesh. To, yeah. yeah. Because my thoughts are one way, and all of a sudden, like I say, that one little spigot from the uh, shower head is shooting out freezing cold water. And you're like, huh? That can't even happen. Mm -hmm. But that's the voice of God. It runs yeah. right across mm -hmm. the grain of everything happening yes. in your mind. And you're thinking, okay, this is God. Mm -hmm. He's saying something. And then you just take the time to listen. Yeah. And when he speaks to you and gives you a promise, he'll keep it. Yeah. But you have to become a master mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Hearing God and holding on mm -hmm. to the promise that he gives you. If uh, Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you guys to just... Just a couple of verses more to share with you guys in Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing mm. and hearing by the word of God. You know, so, I never thought, I've never it, seen it that way. Isn't this awesome? Wow. Yeah, faith yeah. comes by you hearing God. Rima. 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 It comes, and, not and just, now, Lev and I saying this word back and forth, Rima, that's very exciting to the two of us, yeah. because we know that what Rima is, yes. is the personal Amen. word of God. So, you, a, a, a very horrible tragedy happened years ago when a bridge had washed out, and some women decided when they were on their way to a prayer meeting, well, let's do what Peter did. He walked on the water, right? Uh, they decided they were going to walk on the water. So they mm. held hands and prayed and, and got into this water, started stepping into this water that had washed out this bridge. It was running so fast and so hard, and they all died mm. because God hadn't spoken to them mm -hmm. to come. All right? That was a Rima word to Peter thousands of years yeah, ago. Amen. And Peter could take that Rima word and walk on water. Mm -hmm. Some people say, you know, test yourself in your bathtub. See if you can walk on the water. How are you going to do that? Yeah. You know, faith isn't you whipping something up that makes yes. you mystical, mm -hmm. that makes you uh, somehow able to get whatever you want because like, all your feelings and your confessions are lined up. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Faith is hearing the voice of God. Okay? Wow. And, and believing Mm -hmm. when you've heard, but that, I'm going to tell you, that's going to take you deciding to be a disciple. Yeah. It's you, a personal yeah. walk. Yeah, you can't hear God if you don't know Him. No, that's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. That's the thing. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 it doesn't come from you. Mm -hmm. Faith is not coming from you. It, it, it comes from an inspired visitation mm -hmm. and a phrase from God. Mm -hmm. 
And when you hear those things, Mm -hmm. listen to the scripture again. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you get those things in your private time and in your time of devotion, it didn't come from you. Yeah. Your devotion gave your heart, your I saw your spirit time mm. to listen mm-hmm. and then to hear a phrase from God that you were going to hold on to. Mm-hmm. And that in itself is faith, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. When you hold on to something God says to you personally, faith is not something you whip up. Yeah. And I, I, I feel so bad when I see people saying confessions over and over and over again. I feel so bad. Mm. I really do for them. Because they're trying to conjure something in the flesh Mm. that only happens by the Spirit of God to you personally and privately. It's like gold. You know, gold, you can find gold on this earth, but where does it come from? Mm -hmm. It's not from this world. Faith is the same thing. None of it comes from you. Yeah, you know, true. you can have it, but it all comes from hearing the voice of God yeah. and having a confidence yes. in that voice, okay? I want to look at just one last verse here today, guys. Philippians, yeah, Philippians 2.13. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, this just kind of nails it in the end. For it is, it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Mm. So again, nothing that's of God, nothing that's good mm-hmm. uh, stems from you. Yeah. You don't celebrate yourself in any of this. Mm. Uh, what, Whatever God's doing in your life. Mm-hmm. Even the will, listen to it again, for it is God who works in you both to will it mm-hmm. and to do his good pleasure. Yeah. I mean, everything stems from him. Mm. And so remember, uh, if you're saying, well, I want faith, well, you want that to start in your life, begin to have prayer times with God. Yeah. Begin to believe that voice slowly mm-hmm. in small things, then in bigger things and bigger things like David did. Mm-hmm. What is it? He killed the, the bear, mm-hmm. then the lion, mm-hmm. then the giant. Yeah. So, you know, there, there were stages to how he grew. Yeah. In his faith, there's stages to our faith too. Yeah. You know, it's funny where Jesus said, you know, to, I forget exactly who he was speaking to, but he said, if you have faith the, 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 the size of the grain of a mustard seed, mm-hmm. you could move a mountain, but nobody's ever moved a mountain. Mm-hmm. Because faith is not something you have. Yeah. It's something you get after hearing the voice of God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't originate from you. Mm-hmm. You don't drum it up. Yeah. You hold on to uh, the voice and the word of God, he speaks to you mm-hmm. uh, during prayer. And that Amen. is faith. You, Amen. You think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that kind of takes away yeah. the mysticism yeah. of faith because a lot of folks make it about some doing some really weird things yeah. instead of just yeah. a part of your regular relationship with God. Yeah. Amen. You know? Yeah. So anyway, that's all I had to share. I hope you guys mm-hmm. have a great week. We're going to have, I think, another interview for you guys next week, we had uh, Kathy Bootlier on last week, and she was just fabulous. Yeah. We just so enjoyed it, mm-hmm. and uh, so enjoyed having her on the show, and it was just a lot of fun. And so hopefully next week we'll have another interview for you. You guys have a great week until then, and thanks again for um, you know uh, flipping on YouTube and checking out our show. So God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.